Welcome to the Collector Cave. And tonight we have a 1-6 scale review of Mars Toys Mr. J, which is an MAT014. And this is a third party figure. Um, it's obviously based off of Jack Nicholson's Joker from 89 Batman. But since it's third party, uh, they can't call it that. So it's, it's, a, it's a third party figure. And Mars Toys, um, this is my first one of them but they've kind of made a name for themselves in the 1-6 scale market for third party. I've, I've seen some reviews of some of the 66 Batman stuff they've done. Uh, the Joker turned out great. Um, and they've made, um, they're making an Alfred now from the 89 Batman. And in the past, they've made a Bruce Wayne, which is uh, unavailable now, I believe. Uh, Alfred's up for pre-order. You can get him now. I think Mr. J's sold out everywhere too. But I got this from um, Giant Toy, which is the, the main... Um, when I go through for third party, I've never had a problem with Giant Toy. Uh, they back up their product. If you have any issues, you can email them and they'll they'll take care of you. So um, I've enjoyed um, purchasing through Giant Toy for third party stuff. And it comes shipped good. Now they always ship with um, like a wa waterproof uh, cover over the box. So no damage ever happens, which is excellent. But uh, looking at this this box art, really neat look of, of uh, Jack Nicholson as a Joker here stylized version was with, with uh, the white kind of being shaded in blue a little bit like some lighting going on with his hat uh, Mr. J 1-6 scale collectible figure and on the side um, it just says 1-6 scale uh, collectible figure nothing on the top or bottom and on the back they kind of show you a couple poses um, you can get this guy in. So basically this is a version of, of when uh, Joker was at um, the Flugelheim Museum in Batman when he uh, invited Vicky Vale for the date and then um, before that, when he meets with um, Grissom at top of the tower, and then with the mob bosses uh, when he uh, when he roasts uh, Rotelli uh, with uh, with the joy buzzer. So a couple different looks from here. So we're gonna go ahead and get this guy unboxed. I'm very excited. I haven't watched any reviews, seen a few pictures, but I'm I'm curious to see the quality of this third party uh, figure from Mars Toys. Okay, when you take the top cover off, you're greeted by this slip cover in this shoe base style uh, box. And three pictures, these are actually photographs of Jack Nicholson as the Joker. And I can't say that I've ever seen any of these shots before. Um, you know, these weren't in the, in the movie. They're probably, you know, promotional pics, whatever. But really cool that Mars got their hands on these. This one looks familiar to me here in the middle. But um, very cool, black and white, very stylized. Very cool so far. Okay, and once you remove that slip cover, you get to um, uh, see the figure uh, covered. Uh, comes with three head sculpts, which is really nice. We'll look at those in detail. Um, Alicia's mask for when he, um, you know, kind of does some work to her and she wears the mask. A, a playing Joker card, um, the fedora, um, the artiste hat along with his handkerchief, a gun that holds two bullets, which I don't remember that gun, but it's cool. And then um, he gets some um, additional hands, so a total of eight hands, I believe. And then, of course, his cane and the paintbrush from the museum. So let's get this guy unboxed and take a look at it all in detail. All right, so here is Mr. J, unpackaged, unboxed, and everything he comes with. Um, quite a bit of stuff here that... Um, didn't see everything from the top because there's some stuff in the bottom of the tray, but a nice release with a lot of accessories. I love when companies give multiple head sculpts and a lot of accessories. It uh, really adds to the play value, display value. If you're doing photographs for photography, for toy photography, you can get a lot out of it. So I've, I've messed with the figure a bit, and I, I have to say right out of the package, it seems very high quality. In fact, the way it was packaged... Um, the way they, they had the accessories on top in a separate pa package felt like a Hot Toys release. And it often makes me wonder, some of these people, that these artists that, that make these third party, if some of them worked for Hot Toys before. And I don't know, you know, Mars Toys, who they are, uh, what artists are making these. They usually go pretty incognito since they're a third party. Um... But man, I'm telling you, the quality of this thing is phenomenal. And we'll go into more detail, but just starting off a little bit, the base to start off. A lot of times with third party bases, they won't say the, the actual name. Like typically it would say Mr. J. But this one here actually says Joker, which is really nice. And you have your nice, you know, Batman 89 logo here. 
and even this uh, nameplate has um, a sticker on it to cover for protection, which is nice. And then you have the uh, the crotch grabber, uh, which is nice. Um, so we'll probably use that when we display them. And then you have the uh, the uh, the hat. I don't know what you call this artiste hat, whatever it's called. Um, that's how I'm going to probably display him um, from when he was in the Guggenheim. Or the, uh, the, not the Guggenheim, the Guggenheim is one in New York, but it's based off the Flugelheim, which Anton Furst, the, the set director in, in Batman 89, he kind of helped uh, design that, which is a great look. I love how Gotham City looks in 89. It's, it's so awesome compared to modern day New York City that a lot of them use. Um, anyway, uh, here's the fedora, which it feels like it's real felt. Um, we'll see how he looks with it on. The promo pics almost look kind of big, look kind of goofy, but we will, uh, we'll get a couple pictures of that and see how he looks. Here is the mask that Alicia wears, um, after he is, you know, damaged her. Uh, it would have been cool if they would have given a broken one. Um, you can't make an apple without breaking a few eggs, right? That's what, <laughs> that's what he says in the apartment. Uh, but great detail on this mask. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like there's like some type of gold paint on the chin and nose and on the lips as well. I'd have to go back and watch the movie. It's been a while since I've seen it. But you see the detail there. Um, so I don't know if that's how it looked in the movie or not. I can't remember. It's been quite a while since I've watched it as much as I love that movie. It's been a while. And then he has this double barrel revolver slash shotgun, uh, which actually the break opens. And then it comes with these really huge slugs, which actually fit in. And uh, they both fit in. And I believe it closes. Yeah. Very cool. Um, the hammer doesn't work, but cool that that break opens and you get, you get two slugs there. And then he comes with um, his, uh, his um, cane, which he uses in the Flugelheim, and we'll get a couple shots with him doing that. And then the uh, the paintbrush. <laughs> oh man, such a great scene. I can't seem to focus on this stuff. Um, there it is. Got some purple paint on the end of the paintbrush. Really cool. And then he comes with uh, the bigger type of scarf. He's got one up in his, uh, in his uh, suit coat. But this is the one he pulls out and he wipes the, the paint off his forehead when he's having the meeting with all the uh, uh, all the bad guys at the table. And he wipes some of the paint off his forehead. Comes with that. And then he comes with this uh, necktie, which I believe he wears uh, at the museum, which will probably, it doesn't come on the figure. Maybe they didn't want it to get damaged, which is kind of nice. So I'll probably pull the head sculpt off and, and pop this on uh, and then put the head back on. So really cool there. Then he comes with um, a Joker playing card, which is pretty cool. Remember Jack Napier had the set of deck of cards he was playing with in his hat when um, Carl Grissom sent him to Axis and he turned up the Joker, um, which was obviously, you know, foreshadowing. So cool that he comes with his playing card. On the back, it's got a like a normal deck of cards. And then the Joy Buzzer, which oddly enough is not actually attached to a hand. You have to put it on the hand, which is kind of nice. I think the sideshow version I have of Joker, I have the uh, the black and uh, black and white one, the noir version. The Joy Buzz is actually molded in, and it's actually a metal pin. This is not metal, um, but uh, yeah, it just goes on one of his fingers. So it's kind of cool. So if you don't want to have it on, you can just take it off. Great idea by Mars Toys. And then you get your your hands. Um, here's a couple open hands. And the detailing on the gloves looks really good. Um, you know, nice work. And they're, they feel like Hot Toys hands are a little rubberized. So they're not going to break on you. Here's one for holding probably the cane, I believe. Um, and maybe the gun, I'm not sure. And then you got a pointing finger. I mean, I might be holding the gun, maybe. We'll play around and see. And then a couple more like grasping hands for holding maybe the mask, something like that. And then let's look at these head sculpts because I think these head sculpts are absolutely phenomenal with uh, Jack Nicholson's likeness in the Joker makeup. So here's the one where he, uh, he wiped his forehead off. You know, he's like wiping it off. 
talking to Russ Telly, uh, the guy he fries with the joy buzzer. Um, <laughs> I gotta watch this movie. It's been so long since I've watched it. You know, 89 Batman, like many probably, is what got me into Batman as a kid. I think I was 12 or something when it came out, and I didn't care for Batman up to that point. He was boring to me because he didn't have any superpowers. But when I watched that movie, man, that, that got me to Batman. So this is just, man, this is so awesome to see this. I wish Hot Toys, you know, I do have the 89 Batman on pre-order from Hot Toys. They're releasing another version of that. And, of course, the Flash version. But they haven't gone back and done a Nicholas a Nicholson. So, man, props to Mars Toys for the look on this. It, I mean, from all angles, this thing looks like Jack. Look at the eyebrows. Holy cow. I mean, that is... Oh. I got to say, his eyes are looking up, got that evil look. This is, um, this is maybe one of the best head sculpts I've ever seen from any sixth scale <laughs> team. Holy cow, man. And then the one I'm going to probably use. Good golly, look at that. Oh my goodness. I think that's when he um, shoots that uh, flower at Vicki Vale. The, uh, the acid comes out of the flower, misses her, and he laughs. Or he says, boo, right? He scares her. Because uh, he was, I'm melting, I'm melting, when she threw water in his face. <laughs> so good. Look at that mouth. And then uh, Keaton, you know, Batman breaks through the top of the, the Flugelheim, comes to the rescue of Vicky. Uh, but I'm going to try and get in closer to see that mouth. Hopefully it shows up good. Sometimes when you transfer to YouTube, it doesn't, it goes up or down. But man, that is unbelievable. For a third party, and I've, I've had a lot of good third party, like Susu Toys, I think is high quality for third party. This is my first Mars toy, and I got a, toys, and I got to tell you, man, I am, I am 100% sold. I, I, you know, you may not, some people don't care, like the idea of third party, and I get it. I, I get that they're not licensing it, and they're using someone's likeness without approval, which, man, I get it, but, um, wow, this is, um, this is phenomenal. Okay, enough gushing over the head sculpt. So let's go ahead and get a little bit closer and look at the look at the actual figure because that's a lot. I spent all this time, but it's just so good. So if we look at this this head sculpt too, man. Oh wow! I'm telling you, they really got the likeness of Jack Nicholson as Joker. Look at that look. That right there is like perfection. In fact, I think these two might be the same head sculpt. Um, but the one has white paint rubbed off on it. I think they're exactly the same. The eyes look the same. But whatever, that's cool. They gave it, if they get an extra head sculpt just for the white paint, that's fantastic. Holy cow. Not something you would expect to get. And, you know, it's not cut at the neck, so it's one piece. So... You, you can't get some, you know, motions you might want to get, but still, like, as evil as he looks with the look for, you know, that he gave, you don't need to have that. You can just do simple stuff like this. Oh, my gosh. That is so, so good. And the suit, high-quality material. The material feels great. It is a little puffy, and I don't know if they've got a fat suit on them or if it's just because you have a shirt a vest, and then the sport coat. But um, I, I'm telling you, the quality on this figure, if you've never messed with Mars toys or anything like that, I, um, man, I'm, I'm impressed. And then as we go down a little bit, these are buttons. They're not magnetic. And I, I often worry about if these buttons will pull off eventually. Um, I, I pulled the bottom one off, opened it, and it was hard to get back on. I'm, I'm hesitant to actually open this all up, but the vest has got buttons too. So if you wanted to open this up and probably take the coat off, you could and open the vest up to see that orange shirt and the tie better. You know, the tie is that purple and green, which, um, man, looks really good. The orange shirt looks phenomenal. A lot of times when you have a tailored figure, sometimes they don't come shipped very good. You know, whether they've been during packaging, things get messed up. But I got to say, man... This thing is pristine out of the box. And then he has his little um, handkerchief there. 
which I don't think pulls out. I'm not going to try. No, I think it's actually stitched in there, glued in there. Um, and then there's the pants and then his, his, uh, his shoes. Check out these shoes. If I can yeah, zoom in there at the purple. Um, and if I lift up the pant leg, he's got white socks. Uh, I can't see past that if the figure's white or not. It's hard to tell, but regardless, um, really nice tailoring job by Mars Toys. And then the, the bottom of the feet are just flat soles, like you would get in a dress shoe like this. So um, let's kind of go over articulation now because this thing, um, sometimes you, with third party, um, the bodies they choose are, are kind of cheap um, and they don't hold their pose or they come out of the box with loose joints. But this Mars Toys, I'll tell you, uh, the joints are like butter. They're beautiful. So the head, again, we mentioned it's it's all one sculpted piece. The neck and head, there's no there's no cut there. So, you know, he can go down a little bit. He can look up a little bit. And then, of course, you can tilt the head a little bit and, and turn it. And then the arms, you know, go out, go out 90. There is a bicep swivel. And then it's um, double jointed, double jointed elbows. And then um, a ball peg, a ball hinge, a ball hinge wrist peg, which is nice. Um, yeah, they feel, the arms feel good. They don't feel loose. Um, the chest, there is a ball joint, but because there's so much tailoring going on here, um, you really, you can twist them. You can definitely twist them. But, and as far as crunch, he does crunch a little bit. Um, not back too much, but I mean, I'm okay with that. It's not, it's okay for what this is on uh, the legs, um, go up almost 90, a little less than 90 knees. Oh, the knees are ratcheting really tight ratchets. That's surprising and very welcome. Thank you, Mars toys. And then the um, foot is on a ball peg. And you got great range. Man, my camera's not focusing. Sorry, guys. But um, so overall, this, um, this is um, really good articulation from, from Mars Toys. Boy, those knees are really tight. Man, I got to try and get this suit. To, um, it's kind of puffing up a little bit for me moving it around. But um, let me... Um, let me put on a different head sculpt and we'll get a look at the other head sculpts. Okay, so a couple of things here. I got the hat on. And, and again, I, I am really not crazy the way the hat looks. Um, it's really loose sitting, which I guess is nice so it won't damage the, the paint and the head sculpt. Um, but as you can see, it's really loose. And I just, I don't think it looks the best personally. Um, you, you know, you can judge that yourself. But one thing I noticed, and I'm a little bummed, I guess they can't do too much, but I, you know, I went back and looked at some of the shots from the movie, I couldn't remember. This jacket is what he wore um, the night he did, I think he did the Axis Chemicals. He had the trench coat, of course, and then afterwards when he, he took out Grissom and then those gang bosses, and he had the tie on. But at the museum, he has, you know, he has on his little artist cap, but he has a full purple coat on, purple suit with this tie, the orange shirt still, um, and then this tie. So they didn't give a purple coat. So if you want to get technical about it, because I was going to use the museum head with the artist hat, um, this isn't accurate then. Um, even the pants are different. Uh, the pants he wore wasn't the pinstripe. So I don't know if maybe they're selling like another set of clothes, but regardless, I want to show you guys, this suit coat does come off pretty easy. And as you can see, there's the vest and there's an orange shirt, which is nice material. It almost feels like it's silk. And then all you do is take the head sculpt off, pull up the collar to take the necktie off. Um, and then I put on the, you know, this, this whatever this thing is, bow, some type of bow tie, whatever, whatever they call it. Um, but as you can see, these buttons are not, um, they're not um, magnets, which I think... With the 66 Joker, the Joker, uh, the Cesar Romero, those were magnetic. I remember seeing on a, on a video, a review. But these are actually working buttons. So that worries me because over time, 
uh, they're going to probably rip or, or tear. But anyway, regardless, um, yeah, this is how it's going to look. So, you know, a little bummed out that it's not actually technically the right costume he wore at the museum. But hey, man, I'm just kind of splitting hairs here. Regardless, this this Joker looks fantastic. And here he is with um, with his head sculpt on where he's worn off the paint. It was so subtle. But remember the look of those those gang members when they saw him... Um, the mob families, when they saw him wipe that paint off, they didn't know what was going on. <laughs> ah, so good. So let's go ahead and get him set up with the other head sculpt and the artist hat. All right, so here he is after Vicky threw the water in his face. And he says he's melting, he's melting. And he says, boo. And he has the artiste hat on. I don't know what it's called. I'm not, I'm not a painter, but whatever it's called, the painter hat, right? And it uh, just goes on his head. You can put it however you want it. But I believe in the in the movie, he had it kind of um, tilting to the right like I have it. Our left. Um, but yeah, you can play around with it however you want. Um, but man, that is an awesome look. I, I absolutely love, love this look right here. So cool. So um, I changed the hands out. This one hand was hard to pop on. And I will say this head sculpt, I'm still not sure it's completely on. Um, it would not push into that ball that ball peg in the body. And um, you gotta be careful with, with the suit because it's a lot of material. When you're trying to push the head down, it'll pull down, pull down the vest and the shirt. So I actually used some tweezers uh, to kind of carefully pull the collar back up. Um, but you may have to heat up the bottom, um, the bottom of the ball, the ball peg. A hole on this head sculpt. At least I, I probably should have. I didn't. This one popped on no problem, um, but this one was one I had trouble with. So just, just of note, you may have to use some heat um, on the bottom of that. I'd be careful around the head with the paint. So you don't mess it up. But um, yeah, you know, now that I think about it, I, I wish he had the purple, the purple suit um, like he does in the movie for this look. But a lot of times they'll sell like clothes for third-party stuff so maybe they'll make it but regardless it's a minor point man I mean this is just if someone sees this they're not gonna remember it was a purple coat I didn't and I've seen the movie probably a hundred times <laughs> so yeah what an awesome look um let's go ahead and try to get a couple other looks in too all right here's uh Joker with the hand buzzer the joy buzzer and that scene with uh Rotelli he says something like, uh, well, if we can't do business, we'll just shake hands and that'll be the end of it. <laughs> uh, ooh, I got a live one here. Very cool. Um, there's the joy buzzer. It was kind of tough to put on the, the finger. I tried the other hand. It actually goes on the right hand, but I think it's actually the ring finger. I put on the middle finger. Um, but yeah, it's still, you know, really cool that they, they gave you this. Um, it's probably a little bigger than it should be. But still, I mean, very cool that it's actually an accessory and not just, um, not just um, sculpted in. One thing I am noticing all of a sudden is these ankles are getting kind of loose. Um, so that might be an issue. Um, everything else seems tight. Like I said, the knees are ratcheted great, but I just noticed these ankles are getting loose. And I haven't messed with them, but more than what, a half hour here. So that's a note, that's a point to note, weak ankles, which is never good for a one six scale figure. But you know, you use the um you use the stand with a crotch grabber and you're not gonna have any issues. Um again, I'm not a fan of this hat. He does wear the fedora in this scene, but it just I don't know, it doesn't look right to me. I think the rim is too small. That's the problem. The, the, this is too big, the the top is too big and the rim is too small is the problem. It's just overall, it's too big of a fit, as you can see. But cool, they gave it to us, right? Um, all right, so that's uh, the look there. Uh, another thing I'm noticing, too, is I take these head sculpts in and out, on and off. Um, it's pushing down the collar. You really got to spend a lot of time tailoring this figure each time you change the uh, the head sculpt. Because it has a tendency to want to want to pull down um, the collar and the vest. So you got to be really careful uh, changing those sculpts out. I think if uh, the neck and head were separate, it would be a lot easier. 
but they decided to make it, you know, a one sculpt, one piece sculpt there. So it's all right. You just got to spend more time with it is all to make sure it's uh, looking good. All right. It's always nice when you can replicate a promo pick. And this is one on the site uh, with him holding the card. Um, it, it, the, you got to hold it. This is kind of the only hand that can actually hold the card to make it look kind of kind of normal. I actually have the card upside down now that I see it. Let me flip that over. But it kind of goes between his middle finger and his ring finger. Otherwise, he won't be able to hold it. It won't go between the um, the index finger. It'll fall out, unfortunately. But uh, you can see the de detail in the card. It actually looks really good. You can see the Joker head there. Um, and there he is. Um, man, what a great, great looking figure. Okay, and here's uh, Joker looking at the, the mask of Alicia. Uh, this is the same hand I use for the uh, the playing card, and you can hold that uh, mask the same way. Really cool. I, I think it's cool that they added the mask as an accessory. Something they didn't have to do. But uh, it looks really good. All right, here's the uh, handkerchief folded up in his hand. Again, the same hand that held the playing card, the same hand that... Uh, that uh, held the mask is now holding this uh, handkerchief, which I folded up, and uh, he's wiping, smearing, wiping his forehead, smearing the paint, uh, the makeup off his head to reveal his uh, his white skin, uh, the Joker skin. So pretty cool. One thing I noticed though, the body's not white, so you actually have um, you know skin-looking arms, which I don't think is accurate because in in that movie, uh, the Ace Chemicals when he fell into the vat, it actually turned his skin white. And I don't think it was just as it wasn't just as his head because remember coming out of the pool outside of Axis Chemicals, uh, the playing cards bubbled up and his hand came out with the white hand. So um, just note that that's not actually screen accurate with the the wrist being white like that or uh, flesh tone. All right, here's Joker with the the gun loading the uh, shells into it, which is kind of a cool look. Again, I must be losing my mind, but I don't remember him using this double-barreled uh, shotgun-type gun in the, in the movie at all. Maybe it was a prop that was never used, but uh, regardless, uh, if they get stuck in there, you could actually take the paintbrush and go up to the front of the barrel to pop the shells out. Because one side seems to be tighter than the other. But yeah, cool look there for uh, Joker loading the gun. And then here's uh, Joker actually holding the gun. Uh, it doesn't hold it too tight, but it, it's enough to get the finger into the trigger. Um, so it holds it okay, as you can see, without it falling out. Very neat. All right, here's Joker with the paintbrush. There's different hands I think you can use for this. Um, different ways to hold it, possibly. But I think this is kind of a, a cool look. Like he's just defaced um, one of the paintings in the Flugelheim there. Of course, you know, this isn't accurate because I have this head sculpt on. This would be towards the end of that scene, but regardless, um, that's a really cool look. Love it. All right, here's that scene when he is um, kind of mimicking that statue. Uh, again, the wrong head sculpt. I don't know if I can change it out again, but he's mimicking that, that statue and he kind of knocks it off with his hand. Um, but, you know, it's hard to get him up all the way. If I can zoom in here. Um, to get his leg back far enough. And the hand to hold the um, cane on this side, there's not really a good hand. They give you more right hands than left hands, I believe. So you can't really, that's the best I could get it. But uh, anyway, you know, really cool uh, look. You can definitely get him some different poses. He's got pretty good articulation. Again, those those ankle joints are getting weak, which is something of note. Um, so having the, you know, having the stand though here, and the crotch grabber, is not going to be an issue. That'll... That'll help that. So at the end of the day, um, this figure cost one sixty nine through um, Giant Toy. You know, free shipping as always. Um, I don't think it's available anywhere anymore. I, I was looking online. I didn't see it anywhere from the normal sites I might order from, um, safe sites, if you will. But um, you know, I, I, for one sixty nine for a, a one twelve a one six scale. 
of this quality, um, I'm, I'm happy to have paid that price. Again, the only thing I worry about is the ankles. I mentioned that. And he doesn't come with any um, wrist uh, pegs. So if you break the wrist peg putting hands on, you may have to find one somewhere online or maybe use a Hot Toys one. Um, I've never broke a wrist peg ever, but I know it does happen. And these hands are hard to get on. I would advise heating the hands up with a with a hair dryer for a few seconds first. Um, I didn't do that, but it was a challenge to get them on. And again, working futzing with the uh, the collar and the tie and putting the heads on is something you're going to have to do with this figure. Um, it seems to want to pull down that vest and that shirt when you put the head in. But regardless, those are just minor gripes. Um, another gripe again is not having the correct suit coat and pants for the scene in the museum. Even though he has the museum face here and the hat and the brush and all this other stuff, um, the this isn't the right suit he wore. So again, a minor thing. Most people aren't going to think about that. They're going to see that head sculpt and remember that scene. Um, but regardless, I, I think this is a great figure, great release. I do have the, um, the 66 Riddler on order, the Frank Gorshin Riddler, the two-pack. And uh, when it comes to Riddler, he's my favorite, I think, one of my favorite DC villains, favorite Batman villain. And Frank Gorshin's my favorite incarnation of that, of that, of that uh, live-action character to date. I didn't care for Jim Carrey personally. So I cannot wait to get that from Mars Toys. Um, it's a two-pack. Um, so if I can expect the same quality from that as this, I'm, I'm excited. So let me know your thoughts. What do you guys think about this figure? Um, you know, it's third party. Uh, what do you think about the Jack Nicholson head sculpts? Um, do you have this figure? Were you thinking about getting it? Do you have other Mars toys? Let me know. Um, and if you like what you if you what you see, um, you know, please comment. I love to interact with people on this kind of stuff. And then like and subscribe if you want. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.